welterweight has always carried a rich history of being one of boxing's most prized weight divisions. Most recently, legends such as Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao wrote the final pages in boxing history. The division was wide open after both boxers chose to ride off into the sunset of retirement, passing on the crown to a new generation of fighters. Earl Spence wasted no time in proving his worth and showing the world that he was worthy enough of taking the throne. A boxer puncher who fights out of the southpaw stance with the relentless appetite of punishing his opponents into submission. What's unique about Spence is that he's a southpaw who works behind an active jab and invests heavily into the body. It's rare to see a southpaw with an active jab. The reason is because in a southpaw versus orthodox matchup, you have to step either to the inside or outside of your opponent's lead foot in order to land a jab. If you step straight, you'll most likely step onto the opponent's lead foot due to the mirrored stance. Spence is very methodical in the way he utilizes his jab. Every fighter has the same set of tools, but how they employ it is what sets them apart. With a mirrored matchup of southpaw versus orthodox, the opponent's lead hand is the first line of defense against the jab. What you often see is a lot of pawing and slapping, and what they call in boxing, hand fighting. A good jab is a tool reflective of the Swiss Army knife, as it's used to maintain control, measure distance, and most importantly, the foundation to setting up power punches. The jab doesn't have to land at a high rate. A good jab is used to get into position to align the attacks from various angles. Once Spence was on the inside, he devoted the early rounds into hammering the body. The way Spence fights, he's not just trying to knock his opponents out, he's trying to punish them. Since he's such a big, strong, welterweight accompanied with the Hemi engine, he prefers to break down and drag them into the deep end. Body punches are considered an investment. Judges typically don't score too high for clean body shots, but the dividends come in payment of weak legs in the later rounds. Each time a clean body punch lands, it disrupts the opponent's breathing. Since Spence fights at such a high pace, it's hard for the opponent to keep up, especially with weakened legs due to the heavy pounding to the body. The body work also minimizes movement. Spence likes to work his way into the inside to plant his feet in order to unleash the barrage of heavy shots. If the opponent was unable to pull away, they'd experience a series of onslaught in the form of hooks and uppercuts. By the naked eye, it may seem that Spence was just throwing punches at will. But it's more deliberate than that. On the inside, Spence is a master at throwing good, short punches that have little telegraph. But he also likes to change up the angles with sweeping punches to get around the guard. With each punch, he also added very subtle steps to create new angles in order to penetrate different targets. And if Mikey can't land and hurt Errol, he's... Spence has a wide range of weapons. Usually a good boxer has only one or two solid punches. Spence, on the other hand, was well equipped. Against Ugas, he showed his menacing uppercut. Ugas fought with a tight high guard and stood his ground flat-footedly. Since so Spence was landing hard shots to the body, Ugas would lean forward and drop low for his elbows to cover his ribs. What this exposed was a small opening from underneath. Spence wasted no time unloading his artillery of uppercuts through the opening. Ugas literally had no answer as he took such a beating that he was rendered blind out of one eye. His one eye was completely shut by the 8th round. Spence also had a proven chin. If his opponents didn't have the power to keep him honest, he would simply walk them down and if they lacked the footwork to pull out of the pocket, the combinations began to rain in from all angles. The suffocation was inevitable as Spence rarely gives his opponents any breathing room, minimizing the time to even think and react, nonetheless strategize. By the time his opponents made sense of what was going on and tried to adjust, Spence just cranked it up another gear and turned up the heat to another level till his opponents felt the burn. Being a good inside fighter means you have to understand the complex nature of small steps and head placement. Spence is always sure to keep his head off the center line and outside of the opponent's shoulder. Since the distance is closed, the straight punches are dismantled unless they're trying to take a step back to create some distance. 
But by the time they do that, Spence would have had ample time to reposition himself. By keeping his head close to the opponents off the line, it's hard for them to line up the hooks or uppercuts. He has such a strong foundation that he was able to launch meaningful punches with enough leverage to chip away at his opponents. By the later round, Spence showed why he was king of welterweights. His stamina is what separated him from the pack. When most boxes began to slow down, he picked up the punch output, chaining combinations together. When he faced off against Brooks, Brooks was so overwhelmed by the bombardment of attacks, he had to capitulate to the challenger and Spence and surrender his world title. Although Spence prefers to press the pace and control the action, furthermore, he has shown his versatility of fighting off his back foot when he shared the ring with Sean Porter. Anyone that follows boxing knows what Porter brings into the ring. God gift the athleticism and a work rate second to none. Spence's defense was on high display as the majority of Porter's punches fell short as they didn't even land clean. He showed he wasn't one dimensional as he remained composed while standing in the line of fire against a heavy barrage of attacks from Porter. Here it is. Right when he was throwing a punch, and this is all you're expecting is. 